Welcome again, curious acolytes of the galaxy, back to the archives. We did a video recently talking about the absolutely overpowered light side ability known as Force Light and all of its insane applications. In that video, we briefly mentioned a circumstance where Luke Skywalker was able to give himself fully over to the Force, which caused his body to erupt in Force Light. This actually damaged Abeloth enough for her to let Luke go. The state was more than just a manifestation of Force Light, but rather a unique state that very few have ever achieved, something known as true oneness with the Force. This ability seemed to be the only thing that actually substantially hurt Abeloth and managed to actually kill one of her form. How insane is that? Luke isn't the only person to achieve oneness, as many from the Skywalker bloodline did also, including Jason Solo, who would eventually become Darth Kytus, all of which we are about to discuss in today's holocron, as well as another Force ability that actually managed to damage Abeloth, although nowhere near the ability of oneness. True oneness with the Force is not just a state of mind like the Jedi claim it is. Many Jedi and Sith have surrendered themselves to the will of the Force time and time again, and entered a state of mind that allowed them to basically have their will and power power right alongside that of the Force in near-perfect synchronization. While this is impressive and all, what true oneness is, is actually a state of being that the person can achieve to where their entire physical form is temporarily transformed as they become a manifestation of the actual Force itself. Now though, let's analyze some of the most famous accounts so that we can fully understand what Force oneness actually is. The most quintessential example of this happening is when Jason Solo became one with the Force during the conclusion of the Yuzhong Vong War. In fact, it happened in the final battle between Jason Solo and the leader of the Vong named Onnimi, who was actually the only force sensitive that the Yuzhong Vong had. During this battle with Onnimi, Jason experienced a moment of oneness with the force in which he was united with its true power. He was briefly transfigured into a pure being of force energy, achieving deeper unity with the force than any other Jedi in history. Jason's entire body was glowing from the inside out with a golden light. Beyond this though, something truly truly special happened. During this state, he was, quote, briefly transformed into the most powerful manifestation of the Force on record. In this state of oneness, he could counter every one of Onnimi's movements and neutralize his poisons. In the end, Jason was so powerful that he actually straight up melted Onnimi through the power of the Force. This is what real Force oneness was like, not just a state of mind. Jason had essentially achieved the state because he had already gone around the entire galaxy, learning from every other Force organization to truly understand the Force in its entirety, taking years to even come close to this. After this had happened, Jason admitted that he didn't think that he'd ever be able to achieve this state again. Compelling though, that it took not only Jedi doctrine, but nearly all of the Force-sensitive doctrine in the entire galaxy to achieve. One of the next times we see Force Oneness being manifested was of course Grandmaster Luke Skywalker. Luke actually did it three times, once in the Yuzhong Vong War and then with Abeloth, which is the topic of today's holocron. The first time he achieved oneness was just like Jason. His body was wreathed in golden light, and not only that, but he shelled himself in golden force light that incinerated all of his enemies that were around him. He slew countless Yuzhong Vong in this state that was described as a maelstrom of luminous force energy that poured from a calm center. It was a storm in which Luke himself did not appear to be present, either physically or as an individual personality even, having completely surrendered himself to the very will of the Force. The second time was when he was exhausted after battling one of Abeloth's many bodies. Luke managed to achieve oneness with the Force and unleash enough power to destroy that image of her and one of her powerful forms, though this time it actually damaged Luke's body. The amount of power he had unleashed was enough to destroy some of his own cells, though luckily, he was able to heal from this afterwards. The third time is a bit debatable though. He was taken in a deadly embrace by Abeloth during their final battle and final encounter. Luke managed to manifest a powerful usage of Force Light to break free. But the fact that the Force Light completely covered his body, plus the emotions he went through in order to achieve it, makes us wonder if this was not just Force Light and not full, actual oneness in the Force. The novel itself doesn't indicate that this was indeed Force oneness, but rather refers to it as just light. However, based on the description, 
we can't help but think that this may have been true oneness like the other two times. The state of being was the only thing that really managed to put an end to Abeloth and hurt her in any way that really mattered. The other force ability we want to discuss, a dark side one that injured Abeloth, did nowhere near the damage. This was known as the dark net ritual that the Sith tried and may have hampered her in a brief moment, but Abeloth was just too powerful and on a level that rendered most force abilities to be inconveniences at best. However, only force oneness struck her with true fear. And I theorize that Abeloth really couldn't be injured by any fully dark side ability to the level of a light side one, as of course Abeloth is a creature of the dark. So what is force oneness truly? We believe that it is a temporary state of perfection achieved by those who have completely understood the true will and nature of the Force and have allowed it to work through them, transforming their body into nothing but a conduit for the divine power of the cosmic Force. In this state, one practically wields all of the power that the Force has to offer, with only limits being how much their physical form can actually handle. Though, Luke Skywalker was cautious about using it as he admitted that the moment of power that it granted him was a slippery slope to none other than the dark side. However, it is not something that can be called upon like other Force abilities naturally, but rather is a gift that is granted when the Force deems it necessary. I believe Luke is actually just talking about the true power that it grants him and wanting to achieve that power on command later. This is why it may lead one to the dark side, not because oneness is inherently a dark side ability at all. It is actually my personal headcanon that if Anakin Skywalker had found his full potential as the Chosen One, then he would exist in a permanent state of Force One able to use its full power to maintain the balance as he desired, a potential entity in the Force in his own right. But again, this is not canon by any stretch, just something that I personally have theorized. But now, Acolytes, let us know your thoughts on truly being one with the Force in the comments below. Is this what Anakin Skywalker's true potential and power in the Force may have looked like? Is Force Oneness Anakin's potential? And what do you think of the only Force ability that was ever able to truly damage Abeloth? Not only this, but actually destroy one of her forms. We eagerly await your responses. But before you go, according to our analytics, many of the Acolytes lights and force sensitives that visit our archives had not yet subscribed to our order. So, if you've been enjoying the daily archive exploration and holocron openings, reach out with the force and crush that subscribe button. Until next time, my fellow force sensitives, acolytes, may the force be with you in all of its forms, and have a great day.